Hello and welcome to the Adventure Games podcast. I hope everybody is well. Uh, now for this interview, this is a very special interview indeed because I was joined by none other than Roberta Williams. Yep, that Roberta Williams, the co-founder of Sierra, who's made many, many uh, fantastic and really important Adventure Games, King's Quest, uh, Phantasmagoria, uh, the Laura Bow series, and of course Sierra made plenty of others. And unless you've been living in a cave, colossal or otherwise, you probably have known that uh, Ken and Roberta Williams have made a return to the game scene and to the adventure game scene by releasing Colossal Cave, which is a reimagining of the text adventure. Now, Roberta was kind enough to talk to me all about uh, how this project exactly came to start, uh, how she start, got involved in the project and how she felt about it and uh, loads of very interesting tidbits because... Uh, I now what I did was instead of just asking my questions, I was looking through different forums and discords and uh, different places on the internet about people talking about the game and speculation and questions that they had, and I put them to Roberta, and she was really kind enough to answer everything. She was very honest, very detailed in her answers as well. Um, and uh, so, if you are a fan of adventure, well, fan of adventure games, fan of Sierra. And if you're very, if you're curious to know anything about Colossal Cave, uh, then I would encourage you to watch or listen to this interview um, as well. Um, as she spoke about again the reception the game got and a little bit about what the future might hold for her and Ken Williams as well. Uh, so uh, now, also before the interview starts, um, uh, we were recording from the very beginning. But uh, before the interview officially began, I spoke a bit with Ken Williams and then with Roberta. Uh, now, I cut that out because that wasn't part of the visual uh, interview, but I've included that in the uh, Patreon uh, for the Patreon support. Just to, something extra where both Ken and Roberta uh, spoke to me um, a little bit about the game as well. Um, and uh, you can check that out on patreon.com forward slash Adventure Games Podcast uh, and plenty of other things uh, as well. There as well, some exclusive spoiler specials with uh, the other developers and other extra content as well. So now that that's out of the way, uh, here is a trailer for Colossal Cave, followed by my interview with the legendary Roberta Williams. You're standing at the end of a road before a small brick building in search of adventure. So take your first steps into Colossal Cave. The lantern is now moving. Explore the vast darkness of the mythical Colossal Cave, but be aware of the many obstacles that stand in your way. Dizzy, you feel a strange pulling sensation. Black Rod. Discover the valuable treasures held within. And brave, perilous encounters that threaten to end your quest quickly and without mercy. Many locations to traverse, secrets to find, and miles of caverns to explore. You'll never know just what your own adventure inside Colossal Cave will bring. Colossal Cave. Reimagined by Roberta Williams. The only way out is in. Buy now wherever games are sold. By, uh, well, Ken and Roberta Williams. Well, Roberta's in video. Ken is uh, is there as well. He's right. He's right, right. <laughs> 
right there and he can come over at a second's notice at, at, anytime we need him but uh and we but, can also we can also um sit together in front of the screen so yeah well, you want. We, we, we shall see maybe if there's any question that ken might be uh you know want to answer of course you can feel free to join us but um yes. but he, he's listening in i i think so uh well thank you so much for joining me uh, to chat to me because we spoke before a couple of years ago and then I spoke to you on my other podcast Robert about your book that you were writing so last yes. time we we spoke you were writing a book and I was just saying about that it's a you know difficult topic with the Irish famine but I really enjoyed the book I felt you know like oh my god you know the the writing you know the, the way that he spoke was really good and then the way that book ended kind of like there could be possible future books but then next thing i hear that you're back making adventure games you know you, you know uh speaking of that i was um really starting to work on the sequel to you know the continuation of the story two years ago um of that story the book uh farewell to tara Mm. I might as well mention the name of Absolutely. it. Absolutely. I, I would highly recommend Amazon. it. <laughs> <laughs> if anybody wants to buy it, if anybody is interested in historical fiction uh, about, you know, the Irish in the um, 19th century and the immigration uh, issues and famine and all that. Um, uh, but it is historical fiction. But I was working on the sequel. I was beginning work on it. And uh, when this game started and we decided we were going to work on Colossal Cave, the a historical adventure game that has, you know, it's very famous, um, the text adventure game. And I start, we started working on that. And so I have not, I did not work on the sequel to my book, but mm. I probably will <laughs> once we're finished with this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, that's I kind hope, of... I hope. <laughs> yeah, no, well, I really enjoyed the book. But then, of course, I was delighted to see that you were back making an adventure game as well. Uh, so I suppose my, my question, what a lot of people probably want to know is uh, what convinced you to come back to make an adventure game and to, uh, you know, and were you, you know, did you have any concerns about going back to making a game or were you eager to get back into it or, you know, how, so what, what convinced you and how did you feel <laughs> or were the conflicting emotions? Oh, I would definitely <laughs> say conflicting emotions. <laughs> yes. Um, <laughs> In that it started out about two years ago, I, like I said, I was actually starting work on writing the next, uh, the continuation of my book, Farewell to Tara, when uh, Ken needed, he needed a project. And what was happening was, uh, it, was it was sort of the beginning of the uh, COVID era, era, maybe we'll say. Um, and uh, lockdowns, the idea of lock, lockdowns and it's a pandemic and, and all that came into being and Ken was looking for a project. And one of the things that he wanted to do was uh, sort of um, get back into programming and, and, and uh, get back some of his programming skills. And he was interested in the idea of um, figuring out how to program in 3D, 3D graphics, 3D gaming. Uh, and he didn't tell me, I caught him looking at Unity videos on YouTube. I, you know, I'd go into the TV room and and he, and he was watching uh, obvious tutorials on programming and programming in 3D. And I, I didn't say much about it at first, but then I was I guess like, what? what is he doing? And I finally questioned him and said, well, you know, I just need something to do because he had just finished his book. Um, that was, uh, uh, what is it? Fairy tales don't always end happily or not, is, all, fairy tales not always, happy not all fairy tales have a happy ending. <laughs> I always get that one mixed up. Yeah. Another yeah, book so I would highly recommend. Yeah, we both, yeah, we both have just finished our books. And, uh, so I guess I was sort of looking for something to do and he was looking for something to do. And there were, you know, we were all, we kind of in our homes, nobody was leaving our homes. Nobody was going anywhere or doing anything. And, um, I know there was a lot of project seeking, especially in the creative world, you know, people were writing books or if you were a musician, you were write, writing your new out, you know, you wanted to do a new album or songs or whatever it was, and we were no exception. And so he, Ken was wanting to uh, do some thoughts about and, and practicing 3D programming, and he had an idea of a game in mind that he might want to do. And I asked him, oh, um, 
you have a game? You, are you thinking that you might want to do a game? And he said, well, yeah. And, and I asked him, I said, well, what, what do you, do you know what it is? I mean, what kind of game? And he said, well, you might not think it's very much fun or, you know, but it's something that's of interest to me. And it was uh, uh, teaching programming to beginner programmers or kids that might be interested in learning how to program. And I said, oh, so it's going to be kind of like a game, but a game where you can learn programming. And he said, yeah. My next question was, well, would, it, would, it, would it be fun? And he said, well, I think so. And I was like, oh, OK, oh, OK. And uh, for some reason, that that night when I went to bed, and we were, I was sleeping. It, I started realizing, you know, he's really serious. He wants to do a pro, he wants to program. He wants to do a game in 3D graphics. And, and for some reason, the game Colossal Cave just popped in my head and I can't explain why. It just did. And it was, it sort of reminded me of back when I first did Mystery House back in early 1980, where I had just finished playing the game colossal cave although in those days it was called adventure just mm. adventure and uh, and it was actually in early 1980 it was being sold by microsoft as microsoft's adventure and also at the same time by apple as apple's adventure same game um but they were both uh selling and publishing it uh on on floppy disks as um their own adventure <laughs> and uh it, it it started it was called the colossal cave i think a, a couple of years later it na its name changed from adventure to colossal cave but anyway i had just finished playing it back then and at, when i finished playing it i was so taken with it i just loved it i was obsessed by it that i wanted to i wanted to play other games like it and there was nothing like this game there were, um, you know, Adventure International was a text adventure game company at the time, Scott Adams. And he, he had seen what I had seen, which was there's something with this game, Colossal Cave, this text adventure game that um, this idea that had never been done before. And, uh, and so he had started his little company doing some text adventure games. And I, I remember thinking, I need to do this. I want to do this too. And that's what that's what um, caused me to sit down and, and just design my own game. And that was Mystery House. And that basically started my career in Sierra Online. And when I, and, you know, and, and coming forward in time to now, it just the fact that it popped into my head when Ken was thinking about doing some 3D programming and with his own game, it just it it's almost like full circle for some reason and and I can't explain why it happened it did and the next day I I went I went into his office and said um um sorry about that hey, oh see, no my dog I'm sorry don't don't apologize for the dogs <laughs> they can get involved um, as well <laughs> um well uh, but I just uh it I went into his office and said, you know, I was just thinking last night, I had an idea if you're uh, really truly interested in getting back into programming and 3D and, you know, um, I thought of the game Colossal Cave and uh, it might be interesting to see if, uh, and this at this point I was thinking about him, not mm. me. <laughs> I said, uh, I said, it might be interesting for you to try to do that, that game because it's already designed obviously, you know, it's its own game. It's a game. It's, it's a complete design. Um, and, and that you could work on that and use that as a design, as a design and just see, you know, see what happens. And he, he said, well, I'll need to get an artist because it, you know, we need graphics. And he, he did, he hired, he hired an, an artist and, and he got started with it. He did, he did contact one of the original designers who uh the dis original designers were will will william crowley and don woods 
the original designers for Colossal Cave. He did talk to Don Woods and I didn't know he had. He just said, well, by, you know, later that day, he said, oh, I just talked to Don Woods. And I said, what? I just mentioned this like two hours ago. <laughs> He's, well, you know, he, he managed to get a hold of him and talk to him and, and, uh, and asked if permission if we could, if he could work on uh, Colossal Cave and do some art with it. And, and that was, it was fine. You know, Don Wood said, and surprisingly, he, he told Ken that already there have been, he said, basically 180 other iterations done. Wow. <laughs> of, uh, in different formats and different ways of, of the game Colossal Cave. So I think to Don Woods, it was like, well, you'll just be another one. So, you know, go ahead. Uh, that, that kind of thing. So um, that, that started it off. And then Ken was, and I went back to my book, the sequel to my book. And so Ken and, um, and his artists started working on it. And, um, but I found myself, as they were working on it, I found myself being pulled into it because I would, I would come in every day and I'm like, oh, how's it going? And <laughs> look over his shoulder and, and I said, well, I don't know if, if you should do it like that. Maybe you should change this or that or, and, you know, you know, and, and after a while, I got pulled into it more and more and basically um, I just got pulled into it. <laughs> and, then your and name was on I the did, title. <laughs> and once I did, it was, uh, it, and I and I, I hate to say it uh, in this way, but it, this is really the way it happened is once I did get pulled into it, um, I was, I jumped in with both feet, arms, <laughs> torso, head, everything else. And I just said, this is going to, you, if you really want me, and they said, yes, they did. It's uh, then, then um, things are going to change and they did change. And I, I, I kind of changed a lot <laughs> and, and we, you know, we started hiring a team, you know, we were really, if we're going to do it, let's mm. do it right. This won't be just a little project that, that can, and um Marcus Mera, his, his, his artist that is still with us. He's still very, very important to us. Um, we're going to do just as a little project <laughs> that we were going to do it. We're going to do it right. And uh, we, we probably, we worked with up to 40 people um, on this game and really tried to make it a real game, a good product, a, um, an important product. It, it didn't seem right to me once I saw that, that Ken was very, very serious on doing this, that we just treated it as a little project. Um, mm. I, I didn't want it to be treated that way. I, I just have a lot of love for the, and passion for this game. It's what started my career, started really Ken's, it started in Sierra Online and, and, and truly the adventure game industry. There are many, many, a lot of people don't realize, but um, there are a lot of people in the, the beginning of the games that the computer, and, and in those days it was computer games. Um, the, I, the, the term video game didn't come in until at least 10 years or so after. So at first in the computer game industry, uh, there were many, many people who got their start by playing Colossal Cave. And uh, not and not necessarily adventure games per se, uh, RPG games, you know, even Dungeons and Dragons. And all, although uh, apparently Don Woods uh, or Will Crowther, I'm not sure which were. I think Will Crowther was in the Dungeons and Dragons. Um, you know, the the gaming. I don't know what you call it. Um, experience back in the 70s, um, really into that and. Uh, so a lot of a lot of gaming, um, a, a computer gaming adventure, Dungeons and Dragons, uh, and now like escape rooms, you know, um, RPG, uh, a lot of games came from Colossal Cave. So I didn't want to give it short shrift. Yeah, absolutely. You wanted to, you know, do it justice. Do it and, right. Yes. Yeah. 
And yeah, because uh, then the, the game, you know, that uh, you released, Colossal Cave, it's a very faithful adaptation to the original. Um, and so were you ever tempted to add anything to the to the game, make any changes either to the story or the gameplay or anything to add, you know, your own spin on things or what the plan all to make it as faithful as possible to the original? Well, as, as faithful as possible. Uh, it was really important to me. The only the only um, areas of where there was any, if you want to say changes, is in the graphics, mm. because um, and not changes. Uh, that's a wrong word. Um, spit my my own spin on it here and there. But that's where, when you play the game, when you play the game, some some of the areas of the game where where you go into, and and I'm and I'm not clear uh whose descriptions are whose whether they're i think some areas they're will crowther's game descriptions and some places i think they're don woods i'm not sure which is which i've i've heard that will crowther was a little bit more succinct in his writing whereas uh don woods was more descriptive and more more fun and witty with his descriptions <laughs> so, you know, I, I'm not really, you know, sure, but in, there are places in the game where you, and, and obviously they, it was a text game. And so you had to play it with text. So the text was written, prose, descriptions, telling you what's, what's around you, uh, what's happening, what, what you see, what you just got, uh, who's there now, uh, some dialogue. And that was all written. It was all in text. And every bit of text that was in the original game is still in this game. Now what, though, we decided, I decided to have a narrator, you know, say the lines. But you can have subtitles as well. If you want to read them, you, you can have subtitles or not. That's up to you. You can go through the game and you can hear, and we have a wonderful narrator. Our, our narrator mm, has, yes. <laughs> I think our narrator has gotten more, you know, accolades <laughs> than anything. They just love him. And, and, and he's, he's got such a wonderful voice. And he's, I agree, perfect. Yeah. he's perfect for this game. And so I, I just decided that this game, since it was originally text, we need to keep the original text in it, but we'll have a narrator. And uh, and he will tell you the story as you go through it, um, but but he's not overt, meaning he's not like just coming in and constantly talking and chattering to you. It's it's not like that. I mean, you really have to ask for him in a sense. Meaning, mm. um, and and so I also decided to go with a point and click interface, kind of like with the eighties and the nineties. Um, it, it just, uh, the original game was parser, parser based, which means that you, you would type in to your, with your keyboard, say you were playing it originally on, um, an Apple II computer, which is the way I, I did. I started with the teletype. That's kind of a famous thing. And, and it's true. Uh, Ken was doing contract programming and he was bringing home a teletype computer or a teletype machine uh, to work at night for a, a corporation that was further away. And he could do some of that at night, um, getting into the, the corporation's um, you know, mainframe computer. And that game just happened to be, and it was called Adventure in the corporation's mainframe computer and he found it and <laughs> and I started playing on it but uh but I ended up really playing with it on our Apple II computer um buying it from Apple Apple's adventure <laughs> and I I just I really fin I really played it that way but um that was a bit with a parser so in that case I was just typing in on my keyboard one and two word phrases to communicate with the game. And it would just text back to me what was going on in the game. So I would type to it, it would answer me back in text and I would type to it, it would answer me back in text. 
that's what a parser is. And I knew I knew I, we weren't going to be doing a parser game with this one, not in today's world. Mm. That was not going to work. So um, my, you know, I had to think about, you know, what, um, you know, how, how, how are we going to communicate with this game? What's the interface? And I just decided to go with kind of the uh, sort of tried and true point and click. It, it seemed to me that you know, that's, that's still a bit old school, but I didn't think it was so old school that it would be horrific or anything like that to, to you <laughs> to do that. And, and honestly, point and click is pretty easy to learn and, and just get started with. And that, that's what I decided to do. And, uh, but in order to hear the narrator and get the description of the game, uh, you you know, with a point and click interface, you just go, you know, you have the changes of your cursor or or icon to look or um, do, you know, have an action performed. And whenever you choose that, you, you're, you'll get the narrator to tell you what's going on, what you see and that, that sort of thing. But, uh, but you have to ask for it not he's not going to just jump out at you right. and start you know um chattering away at you it's not like that um and uh i don't know i think i got off course yeah no 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 you definitely answered the question i think i went you know. way past whatever question no but it's, it's fantastic that you're the ideal interviewee <laughs> <laughs> i okay. just let you talk um but but then what's interesting is when you talk about the gameplay because then um you got decided to make it in vr and then all these other platforms probably every platform that exists um i i suppose because uh looking at the internet there uh, you know I, th I think some people might not know exactly when it was decided to to be in vr because some people say that it's originally vr other people saying it wasn't so when was it when did you guys decide to make it in vr and how did you guys incorporate the gameplay into that? Were there any challenges? Because it's a relatively oh, yeah. new technology. Yeah. <laughs> it was a <laughs> lot of challenge. Yes, uh, a lot. So, um, and still is. Right, um, I, I can imagine. Uh, so wh when did you guys decide to, to make the game in VR? And then you what know, challenges? You know, it kind of started out that way. Oh, okay. Um, I think in Ken's mind, uh, he wanted it to be in VR because... That when he, he was studying Unity, uh, that's where this all started. That he mm. he began to go to Unity's, um, I guess, website tutorial. They have there's a lot of tutorials uh, in Unity for how to use their tools, uh, their programming tools, their graphics tools, their animation tools. You know all of that, and he just he just started um, looking at that and uh, was thinking about what kind of game he wanted to do and he, he just wanted to putter around with it, you know, and, um, and that's where he got the idea that he wanted to program, you know, uh, program a, a little game about teaching programming and, and just, and just have a, somebody who's learning programming, just do easy to program little um, animation series or whatever. And, but sort of build it up in this game as they went along. And that was his original idea. And I, I, whether he, I don't think he was thinking that that game would necessarily be on VR. I, although I should ask him, I'll ask him. <laughs> Did you want that game, your original programming game to be originally on VR or to be done on PC? Probably PC. Probably PC. Yeah, I wasn't into VR yet. He wasn't into VR right. yet. Okay. So that game, he was thinking he would do it on, on PC. But once um, I had suggested, oh, why don't, why don't you, uh, and at first it was him, why don't you see if you wanted to just do, put together a little game, a little game <laughs> of Colossal Cave. <laughs> Boy, was I wrong. Um, and uh, and that's when I, the idea of why don't we do it in VR came. And, and honestly, I think it sort of happened somehow or another. He and Marcus got a hold of Unity, talked to the people at Unity. And I think they were immediately interested in this project. 
And once they got interested in this project, you know, they're, they were all about VR and, oh, you know, this would be great on VR. And, and I think, I think because of, of that, it, it, it went over into that area. And then all of a sudden it was going to be on both PC and VR. And that was pretty early on. Okay. And, and then, as you mentioned, I'm sure there's some challenges. I believe you had to change uh, the graphics a few times. And I believe, Ken, you mentioned in another interview that the trees were difficult to put in <laughs> in VR. So how do you over, how did you overcome <laughs> these challenges then, uh, you know, in, in VR with the gameplay and, and the graphics then as well? Were there anything? Yeah, it's... Yeah, I uh, tree, <laughs> trees are really funny uh, because, well, we hired some good people. I mean, I, I have to give, I mean, it obviously Ken and I and and then Marcus originally, you know, so at first it was Ken and Ken and then it was Ken and Marcus and then it was Ken, Marcus and me. And then once I got in, involved, it just quickly ballooned and we uh, we started just hiring people because we I just said, we're going to do it. We're going to do it right. And it's, you know, we're going to really treat this right. Um, and we hired some very good people, um, uh, experienced 3D graphic uh, artists, uh, envir- you know, from the uh, environmental artists, um, uh, envir- uh, 3D animators, 3D uh, special effect um, people, um, just really we were very lucky to be able to get some really talented people that knew what they were doing and uh um that i mean it was it was really interesting because ken and i had not i mean i don't even know how to even say this i don't even know why we did this to a certain extent but (laughs) we you know we had not been in the industry in 25 years Mm. And I, uh, you know, and I was in the industry one year longer than Ken, because we sold our company, I think in 96 or 97. And I stayed for an additional year. Ken, Ken went on to do other things. And I stayed with Sierra for an additional year um, in order to finish up King's Quest VIII, Mask of Eternity, because I had just started it when we sold the company and um, and I wanted to finish it. And um, and so that was that was that was an you know an additional year that I was still working on games. Um, but still it's 25 years more or less. Mm-hmm. And um, we went on and did other things. We we just we got into the boating world um, and uh, became kind of semi-famous <laughs> circumnavigators you know on our own boat and uh, <laughs> that we drove you know yeah it was just you know, literally like, like there, characters you know. in a sierra game going around the world <laughs> in a boat <laughs> go around the world in a boat yeah we went to like 27 different com- countries you know on a boat around the world and uh took our dogs and it um you know it was very it was a lot of fun it was a lot of adventure there were harrowing aspects here and there, um, and Ken wrote some books about it mm. himself. Um, but anyway, the, we, so we kind of did that. So coming back into this industry and doing something like this, and and we really hadn't been paying attention to what was going on in the computer and video game world, and to suddenly say, <laughs> "Okay, we're going to we're going back right in," back. <laughs> you know, and uh, and a lot of people have asked um it, how we did that or you know we're what surprised us or was it mm. hard or what did we what did we think we were getting into or why did we think we could just do that and, <laughs> and, and all of that and uh, the only answer I can give is that once Ken and I decide to do something we just do it and <laughs> I don't think we think you know well, we it's just, worked well for you guys up until we, we now and now as well. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and so, but, but it's a little bit like riding a bike. Right. Yeah. Uh, and I, and I, still and have I have those skills. I think that, and I think that whenever you do, if, if you do something, if you go into a career um, and you do pretty well at it, it's, it, there's something about you that knows that has a skill. You know, mm. you have, 
you have a certain skill to be able to do this, you know, or that and whatever it is. And, and I think it's innate, mm. which means it's in you, you know, it's part of you. And it's not something necessarily where you went to school and you, you know, you, you took some classes and you kind of learned something and, and you, um, you know, you, you just kind of did it and did it, but um, I don't know how to, I don't know how to say anyway. I, I, yeah, yeah. Out, it's, it's still inside. You still know how to like make games. So it's, uh, yeah. Just because, yeah. Uh, now that doesn't mean that, you know, exactly no 25 years later right. what <laughs> might have changed and obviously things had changed but you still have you 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 know and understand the basics and the basics are important and the basics never change and you know one of the things i always would say you know back in the day I, I, when i was when we had, when i actually was working on adventure games and I did, you know, up to 20 of them. Um, and uh, some of them are forgettable and others are not forget forgettable. But um, I used to say that, uh, that um, there are, and I read, I read this in some of the, some, some of these books on how to write. There are, you know, sort of textbooks, you know, how do you write a story? That there are only something like, and I don't remember the exact number, but it's like 35 or 36 story themes mm. story um i guess themes is the right word story themes that have ever been written in history at least since the ancient greek times only 30 36 say um, um story themes have ever been written ever and every single story whether it's a book or a uh, maybe even a poem a movie um you know a play you know, whatever theme is, it will fit into one of these themes and you can go through it and you can pick out anything and, and it will fall within this theme, this one, that one, that one, that one, that one. And uh, whether that's true or not, I mean, this was a famous textbook, so I'm assuming it was, and it seems so to me. Well, that's down to the basics of a story. You know, the real, the real basic um, idea of this story, that doesn't mean, you know, I mean, you can have all different kinds of story lines, you know, story, the story, different characters, you know, but it still fits within a formula. It's like a formula. And computer game design, and I think game design in, in particular, um, also fits within certain themes. Um, I don't know how many, but I I believe very strongly, just as with stories, it fits within a basic theme. And once you understand those and you know how to sort of design within them, then you, that that doesn't change that much. And so what you then what you have to do at that point is just figure out what are the new technologies that we have to deal with now or how the interface might have changed. How, how you communicate with the game might have changed, but the basics are, are essentially the same. So once you understand that and you know that, um, it's just a matter of learning what the new technologies is, how we fit in, how we fit into it, how we learn them, and we better learn them quickly, <laughs> and then decide how we want to um, take that into the basic of the game. And I will follow on on that. Would you say now this might, I don't know if it's easy to answer or not, but would you say it's easier or more difficult to make a game now that's, you know, with these new technologies and unity or was it easier back when you were making them for Sierra or is, <laughs> or a bit of both? It depends. <laughs> I think it depends on the game, mm. um, you know, and how complex you want to, you want to design it to be. Um, I, in my, when I was, uh, designing games, I had everything from um, mixed up Mother Goose, which mm. I did. Um, which um, I I don't know. I mean, it, it actually sold pretty well, but you had to be a family. You had to have a little kid, uh, and 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 that sort of thing. But uh, but it sold pretty well. But it was a fairly easy game to to design and program put together. 
all the way up to Phantasmagoria, which right, was which, very difficult. That which, was I'm, very... which I'm currently playing now. <laughs> oh, you are? Yeah, oh, for, okay. and I spoke with uh, David a few months ago before Christmas. Uh, David Lee Holm, the main David, the lead actor. David Holmes? Yes. Oh. A really lovely guy. And it's... Uh, yeah, he is. Yeah. The, the one thing I'd say about the game is that house, I would not go near that house. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, uh, yeah, David, oh, that's interesting. Yeah, so if you, if you talk to him again, tell him Roberta says hi. Oh, yeah, no, he, uh, he, was, he was delighted. He was delighted to talk with Phantasmagoria. He said he had a wonderful time working on it, so... Yeah, um, it was. I yeah. have to, I agree with him on that. That was, um, and a lot of people ask me, what was your favorite game to work on? And <laughs> and I always hesitate to say Phantasmagoria because everybody loves King's Quest so much, mm. as I do too. But as far as just pure fun to work on uh, and complex mm. and challenging was Phantasmagoria. But, um, and that was very, very uh, challenging. Right, um, I can imagine and, that because there's some parts I'm like, how did you do that? <laughs> yeah, and and so um, I don't, so I don't know. That, so I, it, you know, it depends on the game that you design. Right. Yeah. How complex, complex. or non-complex you want to make it, and how you want to do it. And I'm sure that today, in today's world, it's the same. It's how complex you want to make it. You know how how much of the um, you know the um, high tech um, stuff you want to do, um, the new technologies and, and all that, how much of that you want to take advantage of. As I did with Phantasmagoria back then, I wanted to take it not only advantage of um, the technologies that were available then, but add on to it, add my, you know, some more onto it and really kick the technology forward. Um, mm. that's, that's something I wanted to do, um, with, but with, the uh, mixed up mother goose, not so much, but, <laughs> um, so it just, it just depends on the game. Yeah. On the game, what you're designing. Yeah. No, that, that's fair. And then uh, you mentioned as well that in today's world, you know, things have changed and I think, well, it's probably a lot more gamers as well. If you play games and people, uh, you know, I, I know I see people who say that nowadays adventure games are too easy. Other people say they want games to be easy. So I suppose, uh, you know, what I'd ask you, what, uh, who did you target the game for? You know, people who played Colossal Cave, Phantom Sierra, because I know some people who are like younger than I am and they neither played Colossal Cave or didn't play many Sierra games. And they just, like yourself, they've launched into the game, you know, head first, feet first. And some of them, at least, for the people that I know who are playing it, they're, they seem to be enjoying it. They're, they've said that they have been playing it over and over again, trying to get all the points and all the achievements. <laughs> right, and trying right. to find other places in the cave. And I don't know if it surprised me because I was like, oh, you know, these people who haven't played these, retro games or, or older games how are they going to find but they seem to have enjoyed it so so my question is who was your target you know who did you think would play well, the game and enjoy it both <laughs> both sides <laughs> um i i wanted i i well a, a part of the reason why i wanted to do this was in honor of mm. colossal cave and the beginning of the games industry the um, computer and video game industry i believe that um, Colossal Cave, which was at the beginning called Adventure, was the beginning of the um, computer game age. It would now whether it's is the actual like first computer game or not is mm. up to debate, but it certainly is among the very first, and it was my very first. And since we decided to to do this game, we have heard from so many. Um, uh, very important people in in the computer game, vi computer and video game industry that also started, um, and there many of them are CEOs running. And I don't even want to mm. say which, which, but some very large computer game and video game co corporations. Bill Spencer, also, maybe. <laughs> I very. I, I don't. I'm not going to say, but there's a lot, a lot that you you wouldn't realize, and we're like, wow, really, wow, and um, and. Um, and so it's, it is so, it's so instrumental with 
with starting our industry. And so I, I wanted to, to do it just for historical purposes. It's almost like taking an old, a very important historical document and, and keeping it alive and bringing it back. And, and I mean, it's 40, I don't know if it's 50 years old, but it's close to it, the game mm. uh, itself. Um, that uh, I, I started playing it in 1980. So uh, a little over 40 years ago. And, uh, but I think that it actually came out in about 76. So almost 50, almost 50 years ago, the game was, was developed. That seems to me it's time that we maybe start look, looking at the history of our industry and maybe having a little bit of um, kind of a nostalgia and a look back and, and learning and understanding where our industry came from. And that was partially in my idea in, in my head is I, I, I cause I am a historian as you know from my book, right? Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> Farewell to Tara. Um, <laughs> that I'm really, I'm really into history, and so uh, the idea of bringing it back was was really something I wanted to do. But um, so that was part of it, and then I knew that a lot, min, you know, mil, probably at least a million people, if not millions, have played this game all on text in various ways over the last 40, 50 years. And I thought there'd be probably a lot of them that would be interested in playing it to see if, if, it, if it fit what they might've had in their heads as they were playing it. If they, um, you know, if I could bring it alive for them and, and also for myself, mm. as I was thinking of it in terms of myself as well, because I played it in text. And right. I know when I played it, I had in my mind, I was going through this cave and I had it in my head how it looked and felt. And, and so that was part of it. But the other part of it was bringing forth a historical, almost like document and a piece of history to modern game players and, 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 and game players that obviously love the computer and video game industry. They love it. They're game players. I mean, this is their their lives. Many, many want to go into this industry. And again, I mean, this is just me maybe being a teacher or whatever, <laughs> that they have a little bit of understanding where and how games came into being and what the original thoughts were and how they were played. I'll be it good, be it bad. Mm. And then maybe, you know, even playing it and getting an understanding of, well, that's that's how you would go through a game 40, 50 years ago. It, sometimes it may seem illogical or mm. unfair um, or annoying or irritating. You know, if there's a maze, you know, like, well, I don't like mazes. You know, <laughs> but that is what that was. Right. And And then, you know, well, you know, it's historical. That is what mm. it was. And if you're really, truly interested in this game, you know, in this industry, it doesn't hurt to have a little bit of historical balance. Um, and, but yet on the other hand, I wanted, this might be the third hand now. <laughs> um, I, I also wanted them to enjoy it mm. and not, you know, I don't want them to be frustrated. You know, I obviously, I, I wanted them to see the beauty in this design because I think it's a very, I think it's a very well-designed game. It's very surprising game. Uh, you know, when you start playing it, you think it's one thing. And, you know, it's like, oh, it's just exploring a cave. And then as you get more into it, then you think it's another kind of a game that's maybe it's, um, oh, it's getting objects and it's solving little puzzles and it's meeting creatures and it's, you know, and it's, oh, it's mapping it out. And, and then, but you get even further into it and you realize it's much deeper, much deeper than that. And, and you start, you start thinking, oh, you know, this game is harder than I thought. This has more elements to it than mm. I thought. It has more strategy to it than I thought. That's why you say a lot of people are replaying it over and over again 
And now they want to go back and, and start thinking about how to get the points. They're rethinking how they're playing this game. So this game has a lot of elements to it. And, at, and the more you play it, the more you realize it. And, um, and so to me, it's a very, very elegant design, a very complex and interesting design. Uh, and um, I really thought that I, 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 I never, I never thought that this was going to appeal to every game, modern, mm. modern game player, because it is so different. Yeah, I did. I never thought that, but uh, but I thought that there would be enough um, players, younger players, that would get into it you know if they persevere mm. because that is the one thing about this game is if you start playing it and you just sort of decide in the first hour to play yeah you know well, you know, mm. I don't, know i don't like the point and click i don't like this i don't like that whatever they're missing a lot because right. because the more you get into this game the deeper you get into it the more you see what it really is and the depth of it. So, and I knew that from a design standpoint. And so it just really depends on the perseverance of the people playing it and, and everybody's going to be different. So we'll just have to see. Right. Yeah. No. And again, on that, um, uh, because I know that Ken mentioned as well that uh, you're, still working on putting it on di different platforms and that and then you kept the design and uh are you still tempted or are you making any updates or any changes based on any feedback or are you saying no this is how the game was um, um we are actually we are <laughs> we're making some we are making some um it's funny because uh all through the whole process of developing this game i was very adamant I, it, the game has mm. to stay the same the gameplay Right. Yeah. Um, has to, has to be the same I, because I the last thing I wanted was and we chose we chose the 350 point version from you know, from the late 70s early 80s the the same game that the Microsoft Adventure and Apple's Adventure were the same 350 point game that's the most iconic I guess you'd say version right and that's the that's the version and that's the version I played. That's the version we wanted to do. And others have come in and uh, like, like Don Woods said to Ken, uh, there has been at least 180 different versions of this yeah. thing that people have done. <laughs> and they've added puzzles and they've added points and they've changed things around and you know done, made their own version of it. Uh, like Zork from Infocom mm. is, was a takeoff of Colossal Cave. They made it their own game. Um, but I didn't want that. I wanted it to be that game. And I was very adamant we were going to stick to it. The puzzles were going to be the same. Everything, all the directions you go are going to be exactly the same. It's going to be the same. To the point that if you get stuck in this game and you don't know how to get past something or you don't know how to get through something or deal, all, you can go to the internet mm. <laughs> and type in, how do I get past the dragon? I don't know. I'm stuck in this maze. I don't know what to do. You can literally go to uh, the internet and type that in. How do I get out of the maze? You know, and maze, uh, you know, it's uh, a maze of twisty passages, all different. How do I get out of here? I'm stuck. You can go to the internet, type that in, and you will get all the answers you want through 50 almost 50 years of gameplay of this and it, and our game is the same the answers you will get from the internet will get you through this our game just fine mm. and uh that's how close it it's the same game however um and, and well and you know the graphics of course we we you know we did in order to make the graphics interesting, I, I took the descriptions where, where either Will Crowther or Don Woods described a, a chamber or a room or an area in the cave or the forest, 
very well and we followed what how they described it would look we followed that but if they didn't there are places where oh you're in a rough passage you know oh you're in a like for instance you're in the hall of the mountain king there are five exits and that's all they said so mm. oh you're in the hall of the mountain king there are five exits so we knew five exits but who was the mountain king you know what does the hall of the mountain king mean how do we how do we show it how do we artistically show it that this is where you are and so I did, you know, we had to come up, we came up with an ancient civilization that lived there thousands of years ago in the cave, um, just so we could have it look interesting, you know, around you. And and that this was the, the, the mountain king's throne room, you know, and it was a very, very ancient civilization. We don't define what, mm. we don't know. It's that ancient. I mean, it's really ancient. But so you might say that was adding like a storyline, but it wasn't so much that as just just something interesting to look at and make it more interesting. But as far as gameplay, it's exactly the same. Um, what was the question? Yeah. So any uh, updates on on the game? Oh, oh, hell, uh, oh okay. Yeah. Um, right. How we might have changed it for maybe today's sensibilities. Mm. I think you you were kind of meaning. Yeah, so it's uh, as I was to... mm -hmm. as I was working with my team, um, my our team uh, were people of you know today's game gamer age ages more or less you know from let's say age forty five down to twenty five in that age range, but all gamers and. Very, very few of them had ever heard of, or, or and they certainly never played Colossal Cave. And we made sure that we gave them a walkthrough of the original text game and, and told them, just go through the walkthrough. We want you to have experienced it. We want you to know what it is. And um, and we we also found the original Fortran source code of the, of the 350 wow. point game. So we had that. And, uh, and we all went over it. We read it over and over and over and over again as we did this. But um, the artists, programmers, uh, the, you know, the various um, uh, QA people that we hired to work with us on this game, some of them said, well, we don't know about today's gamers. This just might be too, you know, too, too difficult, too frustrating mm. they're they're just not going to have the patience for this and and i would say really are, are you serious i mean really it's yeah it's you know they're going to need a lot more hand holding <laughs> and i heard this a lot i heard and it was interesting because i would say god i can't really um and i would say well you know maybe we could do a little bit but i don't want to i don't really want to change this game very much, if at all, to to do a, a lot of hand holding because I just didn't feel that would be right. So I resisted. You know, I mm. did. I resisted. We we did some, but not too much because I again I had this this thing I wanted to be that game. Since the game has, has shipped, of course, and I know what you're mm -hmm. alluding to. You're alluding to you know right off the bat. You know we've got some some reviews that it's oh it's just you know we're especially with the vr version you know that mm. we didn't do the you know the the hands that the new the controls you know the, yeah you, you, you mentioned that that you'll never objects. please everybody so <laughs> right right and uh you know, and, and that sort of thing and we didn't uh we didn't it, it doesn't have the um the graphics that they were expecting it looked a little more old school or back from the i think it's kind of like from the early 2000s mm. and uh but what what i guess they didn't realize is that we originally did kind of design this game for vr and this is also a very very big game it's mm. a big big game and we were surprised how big it was once we got involved with it and 
And when you get into VR, you have things like frame rate issues, right. especially with the Quest 2. And, uh, and, and there you come in with the trees, you know, things like that. But hmm. it, um, so we had to kind of back off on the, uh, on the graphics to a certain extent, may simplify them for that reason. And Ken wanted to put it on a lot of different platforms. So uh, the, we were told that the PC version, that all the graphics had to be able to, to, to work on the VR for the VR version at the beginning. Mm. But we could go back in and we could detail out better um, what we're calling the, um, the PC graphics that also would go on things like Xbox, you know, that also ha have, um, could uh, have better, faster platforms. They could then handle the more defined graphics, detailed graphics. But, but, the, but the beginning thing that we, that we were told is that everything had to work on VR, virtual reality, Quest 2, and then detail it out better as we could. So that's one reason why uh, some of the, uh, the, the uh, discussion about Oh, the graphics, they thought the mm. graphics would look better. I actually think they're beautiful. Right, um, yeah. And, uh, and, and I think people also don't realize what a large game this is. It's a very, very large game. And how many think. <laughs> graphics we had to do and it had to work, you know, with all these platforms. Why did we put it on so many platforms, you might say? Why did we want to do that? Why didn't we just, you know, keep it as a, you know, the higher definition v, v, uh, PC type games and really, really detail it out. Well, if you want as many people to play your game and, and experience a game like Colossal Cave as possible, then that's what you do. Right. Well, I think a lot, a lot of people will really appreciate that because any time a game comes out, what I read online is, when is it coming to Switch? When is it coming to consoles? When is it coming to GOG or wherever? So um, Right. And the problem <laughs> is if you try to do that, if you want to say, mm. uh, okay, we want people uh, who on um, with, with their headsets, they, they want to play it. Right. So it has to work for them. PCs, you, you know, you want to play it. Flat your your flat screen, you know, um, uh, game gameplay flat uh, platforms. We want to play it. We want to play it on Switch. You want to play it. Uh, Steam Deck. You want to play it. Uh, Xbox. You want to play it. You you all want to play it. Mac. <laughs> you want to play it. Um, it's you, you know you you can't you can't do a special version for right. all of them. Right. Well, you could if you're I don't know if you're. Um, Activision or or Blizzard or Valve or you're a billion dollar company. Mm. I suppose you could do that, <laughs> but we're talking about Ken and Roberta. <laughs> I mean, and that's what we're really talking about here. Yeah, no, we're not a big corporation. No, absolutely. Now, as I said, from what I've been reading, you know, people that it's been fascinating reading the discussion. You know, people. Uh, saying, oh, I didn't see this, and then someone else saying, and I'm trying not to give spoilers, even though it's 50 years old, and then someone says, <laughs> oh, but did you realize you could do this? You know, you find this room, you can leave the treasure, and the other person says, oh, really? Oh, now to play it again. <laughs> and people yeah. are discovering more about it the more that they play, so. Yeah, um, exactly. So, it's... and what we found is, you know, some of the interviews at the beginning were, were disappointing, to say the least, but actually, to me, not surprising. Um, I, I kind of expected it um, because I think that um, expectations were set to a certain extent. Right, yes. Um, this is a Ken and Roberta Williams game, the return of Ken and especially return, Roberta Williams. Yeah, and all of that. And, <laughs> and expectations, I think, were, were high mm. um, and, that, and that our game had to reach a certain level and it didn't, in their minds, right. reach a certain level. But what we're... And what we're finding is that people who are actually playing the game 
not reviewers necessarily, but actual people playing the game are are actually enjoying it quite a lot. Right. Yeah. No. As as I said, and I and I find mm. a lot of comfort in that because, let's face it, it's people playing the game that's more important. Yeah, reviewers might have a deadline, but now the people, as I've mentioned as well, these people who are younger than I am, and they're replaying and replaying, discovering more, and they're they seem to be really enjoying it. So. Good. Um, well, that makes that, that's, that's from makes what I can sense. see. <laughs> uh, well, good. Yeah, that's from what we see too. That's what we're that's what we're seeing. Yeah, no, that that's great. Now I don't want to keep you too long. I mean, I could speak to you for hours, but I'm sure you've got to things to do. Do you um, want Ken? Do you have anything for Ken? Uh, I think you've answered as well because my questions was about uh, VR. If you want to join us, absolutely. Well, um, no, he went somewhere. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> no, don't don't worry. Um, but I suppose now, now I know that you mentioned in other interviews, you know, because I know that you were asked about, uh, you know, the future, you know, what would you do next? And I believe, you know, you mentioned here that you plan on writing the sequel to the book, which I'm delighted about. Uh, and I know other people would, <laughs> would, you know, would like a, you guys. A few, a few, maybe. Yeah. And now yeah. I, I would also love for you guys to continue working on games as well now that you're back. Um, but I suppose let, let me pitch you an idea. See what do you think? Oh, okay. <laughs> something okay. different. Something that okay. I think might appeal to you and Ken. Something the two things that the two of you might like. So okay. first thing is massive multiplayer online. I know that's what Ken is into. Uh, massive multiplayer online murder mystery adventure game. Now we have Among Us with people you know online, but my idea would be like a narrative multiplayer online. Murder mystery like uh, Colonel's Big Quest, Laura, which I also played as we spoke and I loved it. And I did a whole okay. podcast on it with Matt Latham. But um, so I don't know how you would make it. I have absolutely no idea. <laughs> it's probably too, t- but if anybody could do if it, anybody could. I- I'm guessing it's you and Ken William. You know, but- <laughs> it's it, it's interesting because af- um, before we sold Sierra, um that's when the whole massively multiplayer idea was right yeah in. with um, world of warcraft and everything and yeah and that was just beginning to, to come in and and uh and i had thought a lot about how how you could do a, you know and it's funny i was going to say an adventure game and be ma- massively mm. uh, multiplayer how could that how could that be designed and now, before I say how what I had thought about that is that I guess to a certain extent it depends on how you'd find what an adventure game is. Right. And I have my opinion on what it is, um, but I what I have found is that the word adventure is uh, is given to a lot of different types of games these days. Yes. That I didn't realize, and. And I'll, I'll say, oh, this is, you know, this is uh, action adventure, adventure game, you know, and, and I'll look at it and go, no, that's not, not an adventure <laughs> game, not, you know, not the way I think, you know, or it's, uh, you know, or it's an action adventure role playing, you know, a kind of game. And I'll go, but no, not the way I think in terms of, of it, you know. <laughs> And and maybe you know maybe the way that I think of an adventure game is very old fashioned, uh, but the way I think of an adventure game is it's basically a story that it's like an interactive story. Mm. Uh, now, not so much in the case of Colossal Cave, I must say, is Colossal Cave in and of itself is not necessarily a story based ad- adventure game. It's, it's really it kind of is but kind of isn't mm. it does have a story with it that's but it's very subtle and it um I, I would call it more like um you know how do you you know why am I here what am I doing what's the point how do I get out of this what's the end and and it's sort of a discovery in that in that in that way um and and you do and a, and it's a sort of a spoiler i guess you do come to the and they kind of it, the game kind of tells you at the end that it's it's an adventure tour and uh sort of liken it to maybe uh you were on a very complex uh like disney world ride 
but it's very <laughs> complex and it's very deep. <laughs> And, you know, you're sort of in it and it's and and it's all set up for you to experience this area and that area and you're sort of being led through it and it's but it's an adventure tour. Mm. And that's kind of what it is, but most my my way of thinking as an adventure game is it's 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 a, it's story based and you are you are playing a story. And, but it's very interactive and you're the main character. And if you're not the main character, you're controlling the main character right. as in a book or as in a movie. And, and, but you get to decide where to go and how much exploration you want to do and, and, and how to do it. But it, but it's, a, it's, it's essentially a story and you, and we, we bring you back to the story. You can explore, you can do you can get things, you can solve things, but we bring you back to the story and then we let you explore some more and then do more. And then we bring you back to the story and, and we give you a goal of the story. There's a story and your goal is to do whatever. That's your, your goal. It sets you out on this course. You know, that's to me um, what an adventure game is. And it, and, and it is like kind of like a book in a sense, like you're yes, playing a book yeah. or you're playing a movie. It's kind of like that. And so um, when I would think about how would I make that sort of adventure game, my idea of an adventure game into massively multiplayer, even multiplayer, yeah, even I if it's just four people. Yeah, um, I don't think anybody's figured out how to do that for an adventure game. So No, they haven't. And yes. The reason why is I, it's really pretty simple, and there, and um, and if I had been able to figure it out myself, I I think I would have done it. I, I might have, um, and and I, I'll think I'll still think about it, and I'll think about it. And your idea is not a bad one. Um, <laughs> Thank you. It's just an idea. I don't know about the execution. Yeah, and, but... uh, a murder mystery, you know, is is uh, is maybe an interesting way to approach it. Mm. But the the problem is that since my idea of an adventure game is story-based, mm. a story in and of itself is linear. And, and I never really, um, um, I think with Colonel's Bequest, I think I did dabble in having a different ending depending on how, yes. you, <laughs> how you did it. I remember, but yeah. I, I only did it once and I I kind of I was a little uncomfortable with it because an adventure game, my style of adventure game is a story, and and every story is linear. It it follows a path. Um and uh and uh you meet you meet characters and you get subplots and you come back to the to the story and some more subplots and you might get some red herrings and you know, other characters and how they fit into the story and, you know, and where the story is leading you and how you as the main character fits into it. And as the main character, of course, you're the hero or heroine of the story. And, and, and so it has to follow its course. Like any story. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and if you, if you get into a story and it starts going off in all these different directions and it just can't seem to find its way back to the storyline, where is it going? Right, yeah. How, you know, I mean, you're going to lose what it is. You're going to lose the story. If you lose the story, you don't know what you are. You don't know where you are and, and people are going to lose interest. Um, and so I thought about, God, you know, and I would think on the very sim simple terms of, well, let's say four people are playing an adventure game, just four. Mm -hmm. If you and three other friends, you're going to come in and play this adventure game yourself. And this is where some of the role playing games would come in, where you'd be a team of four or five. And, you know, one of you is, you know, is the, the, um, you each have a role to play you know maybe one is a thief you know one is the warrior you know another is i don't know the uh i don't know what are the different uh, so i never i never designed a role play <laughs> you know what i mean <laughs> yeah you, know, you each have it you each have wizards a and wizards yeah, magic yeah. right right 
Um, and you each have a, a, a role to play. So there's four of you. Well, that gets into the role playing type of game, which is not the same, but I thought, right. well, okay, okay, let's see how we could do that. And everybody has a role. I suppose you could, um, you know, try to have a storyline and, and do that with four people. But you know what happens to can each of the four wander off their own way do you have to stick together as a group how mm. do you make that happen how do you keep them together right. how do you because when i would design my games i let you go where you wanted to go i didn't now if i didn't want you to go a certain direction i would put an obstacle there you could only go so far, you know, then there's a river and you can't cross it or there's a, you know, there's, you know, a cliff and unless you could climb it, you couldn't go past there. There'd be some way that I would corral you into a certain area and let you explore. But within it, I didn't want to keep you from wanting to go whatever direction you want to go. But how do you keep four people? from go, you know, so, you know, going, I'm going to go over here, you know, and you go over there, you know, I'm going to, well, why don't you stay with, me? no, I'm going to go over here. And, you know, and, and so now you've got four people wandering around and, and they're going to meet characters, you know, you, you're going to have your characters and your story that are computer characters. And so, you know, so if you, if it's, if you're playing in a, an adventure game, it's just you, Mm -hmm. you meet the character you learn what you need to learn and they tell you or they do something to you or bad or good or whatever and that's that you move on or you come back if you need to but if one of if you're if there's four people playing and you see the character well are they gonna is this character gonna say something different to one of you and then then somebody else comes along and meets the character What's the care? Is the character going to say the same thing or do the same thing to the second person or the third person? Right. Or the fourth? Yeah, yeah. I mean, what is, you know, and how is that going to work? And, um, and then you, you multiply that by the game, you know, and the characters. And, and in other words, <laughs> they're going to mess up your story. Mm. I just don't know how you're going to keep a story together. And that's with only four people. Right. Now, yes, imagine if you've got a hundred people, you know, or a thousand people. Yeah, it's about to keep the story flowing. The way the story will, there will yeah. be no more story. There yeah. won't be a story. Okay. And so, so that's what you've seen. That's what you have seen. So no. Okay. So I idea, maybe execution, maybe not. But if anybody could figure it out, you and Ken could. <laughs> but now my my final question then is: say if. Speaking of Microsoft, um, as I'm sure everyone knows, Microsoft are in the process of acquiring Activision, which owned the rights to Sierra IPs. Uh, so let's say if the Microsoft came to you and Ken and said, uh, Ken and Roberta, we would like you to do whatever you wanted to do. You could remake any of the Sierra games. You could make any sequel or make anything original. Here's a lot of money to make the game that you would like to make. Uh, do you know, or do you have any ideas on what you might like to do? You know, would you ideally like to read well, yeah, sequels don't know. or know, make something uh, new? In the case of this game, um, we didn't mm. do it for money. Mm. We, in fact, we paid money to yeah. do it. <laughs> well, <laughs> I hope you do make lot, money actually. back. <laughs> we actually caught, we've actually paid a, quite a lot, oh. you know. Um, well, now, I hope you do make some money back. I mean, well, it'd be nice, you know, sometimes <laughs> we tell each other, we say, well, it'd be great if we at least got paid back. Yeah. I mean, that, that, you know, if we do that, we'll be happy. If we just, you know, get paid back, that would be, that would be, that would be good. Yeah. But if not, our lives are not going to change, you know. Right, that's, it, that's good to hear. In the, in the case of uh, this game, I think this is more a matter of pride mm. and passion, and just wanting to do it and wanting to bring this historical game to to uh, to um, especially to modern game players. Just it's a piece of history. So for us, it was just more of a passion and mm. wanting to do it. We just wanted to do it and have a lot of pride in it and. Um, and 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 for the experience, it was just 
and for learning for ourselves, you know, keeping your skills, you know, up mm -hmm. to date a little bit. So, so money is not something that we're necessary. We're, we're not all that interested in money and uh, right. um, where uh, we have a good life. Um, and uh, uh, so I don't know that money would be anything that would appeal to us. And so, so if you had money to make the game that you wanted, so that was a question. It'd be so. more like if it would be more like if it sounded like an interesting project, I guess right. you might say. Would yeah. be of more you, interest to us. And do you have any possible ideas? I know I'm fishing. I know I'm trying to get information. <laughs> do you have any possible ideas for future adventure games? I hear murder mysteries speaking of our older age, like uh, I, I do three, have but. an idea in my head, um, but I, I don't. Right now, both Ken mm. and I are tired. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you are now to speak. <laughs> well, we are because um, this game has actually been very um, mm. difficult um, and, and hard, more challenging than we thought. And and it's been hard because it's, uh, it is a challenging game. Mm. Colossal Cave in and of itself, is a, it is a challenging game. Uh, the design is very deep. It's a very, very good game. Mm. Um, surprisingly, um, and being being an historic and an old game, it is, um, and that surprised us. Also, we didn't have a company to back us up. When I was working on all my well, other than our very first games, you know, Mystery House and Wizard and the Princess, it was just Ken and I. But those games were pretty simple to do. They weren't honestly Mystery House and Wizard and the Princess and some of the first couple of games where it was basically Ken or I and I, or just Ken and I and one or two other people were pretty easy. I mean, it would be maybe four to six months and we get it out, you know, and it was a lot of work, mm. but it, it was easier. And as games, as our games with Sierra got more difficult, you know, getting into the, you know, King's Quest and then more and more and more games and, Sierra grew and got bigger and bigger. We had a we built up a company and the company had a structure behind it. We had departments, we had programming departments, and that was broken down into various factions, you know, from game programmers to engine programmers. We had marketing department, sales department, and art art departments that mm. were broken down into, you know, again, environmental art animation and we had music department and we had you know we had all the structure of you know the huge development studio or the development house sierra was very much um a very large development house our priorities were on development which might mean be one reason why we didn't find it that difficult to get back into this game because we were always been focused on development right but um but we had we had people that ran those departments. We had like VPs, you know, and everything. So in in in, the, in my case, I just had to um, just concentrate on a good design. I could just really write a good design and uh, and hand it off to say the art department to to do the art. We had art directors that were you know from Hollywood. And they knew what they were doing and they were very good and. They would come and show me the art and go, oh, that's mm, that's really nice. Or I'd say, mm, maybe change that a little <laughs> bit. But I didn't have to get that involved. But in, in the case of this game, we don't have that. Now right. it's just Ken and I, literally. <laughs> Ken and I, it's like back to the days of Mystery House, mm. which is so ironic because <laughs> Mystery House started because of Colossal Cave. And now, and now we're doing <laughs> Colossal Cave and it's just Ken and I. So it's really, really interesting, um, really back to circle back. And but being just Ken and I and and trying to do something big in today's world, although it's not big enough in some people's minds, but they don't understand. <laughs> it's mm. just Ken and I, we're paying for it and we're happy to do it, um, but we're also managing it. Mm. So uh, I didn't have to design this game because it was already designed of course but I had to manage the design I had to manage it and make sure that it stayed what it is 
but I became the art director. I'm the art director on this game. <laughs> I've never art directed. Yeah, I never art directed in any of my games, other than my first, my very first couple of games, and I did the art, and you can see mm. how good that was. <laughs> Not. <laughs> So I had to be the art director, um, and I had to, I also was the sound and music director. I was also, uh, you know, directed the the narrator. I, you know, I had to um, do, uh, I was also the, anim, you know, the animation director. I, you know, I was involved with the motion capture. I was right there. Um, you know, so I, I had to, I was very involved with this game in every creative aspect be it good or be it bad that's just the way it had to be because it's just ken and i right and uh and so and then ken of course he he was not only managing the programming team but on all these platforms but he was programming himself also and was the main programmer and and Ken and I are doing our marketing ourselves. We're doing our sales to get ourselves. We're, you know, so it's all these different hats, you know, we're putting on depending on what we're doing. So we're very much, this game is very much entrepreneurial <laughs> in every way. And that has made it very challenging. Right. And that's why we're so tired. Yeah. Well, first thing is get a good rest, <laughs> take a breath. And then whatever you do, I hope it makes you happy. I hope you're happy to do it. Uh, whether it's a new book or game or boat, hopefully, but whatever you want to do is what uh, I would say. We need um, a good rest. And then uh, absolutely. The, other thing, the other thing we need is we need to see how well this game does. And, uh, you know, and if it, if it does really well and, you know, people are clamoring for it and it's just out there and people love it and they want more, you know, mm -hmm. more, 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 you know, who knows? <laughs> I mean, and I do have an idea in my head, but um, okay. Well, that's something. I, I that's don't. Want, I'm not saying a word because I don't want to promise anything. Sure, at sure. All. Well, but um. Well, let's but, hope. <laughs> if it doesn't do that well, you know, we might say, "Well, you know, it was fun, and we enjoyed doing it, and mm. and for those that that love it, we're happy to have brought it to you." And yeah, well, we we thank you. Uh, the, the final, final question, because I know you probably want to leave, is um, about the acquisition or the impending acquisition of Activision and Sierra. I don't know if you want to give any thoughts. If you don't, that is perfectly fine. But do you have any thoughts on this, what it could possibly mean for C for the Sierra games? Do you think they should be either remade or sequels, or do you think they should be left I alone? Do, yeah. I yeah. do, because especially after this um, experience of bringing back Colossal Cave. You know, again, I, mm. it, it remains to be seen how well it's going to do. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe people don't want an old game brought back. You know, maybe it'll turn out that that's just not going to fly in today's world. Um, and But if it does, that might portend um, some good things for not only Sierra's old games, but, um, I don't, you know, uh, LucasArts old games yeah. or, you know, any other text adventure games. Yeah. Perhaps, Zork like maybe or Zork at Infocom or you know mm. or whatever um that because uh just because something it's like a good script you know a good movie script or a book a good book is a good book this, if the storyline or the design is a good one then there's no reason why it couldn't come back as long as the, the designers and the people working on it understand it and then, and yet at the same time, try to understand the sensibilities of, you know, the modern world mm -hmm. and then see how they can put it together. And, and that's really, really tricky. I can tell you having right. done that. Right. Uh, so I, I think, it, but if it works, I think it's, I, I would love to see that. Yeah. Well, fingers crossed because I, I do think personally that there is a market out there like we we are seeing the return we thought a return of Ron Gilbert to Monkey Island and now you guys and a lot of people talking about uh, Colossal Cave and Monkey Island so I think that you know we shall see but uh, I would love see. it <laughs> yeah we uh, we shall see I, I don't know I mean I, I mean I'm not I have no you know I don't think that it's going to go out and be you know like this super mm. duper you know like the multi you, you know what i mean right yeah 
multiple, you know, multiple mass, you know, multiplayer, massively, yeah, massively <laughs> multiplayer, you know, the, those, it's not going to do that. I mean, we'll be, let's be real. I mean, it's right, not yeah. going to do that. Hopefully it'll do well enough and you can. Well listen. enough. And, well uh, enough. Yeah. And yeah. Well, look, a huge, huge thank you, Roberta, for taking the time. I, t- I know I kept you a long time. Uh, so a I'm huge happy thank to you. do it. I, I am happy to do it, it's... especially for you. Oh, thank you very much. So that was my interview with Roberta Williams. I hope everyone enjoyed it. Uh, I know I did. Uh, And a huge, huge thank you to Ken and Roberta Williams again uh, for giving me the time to, well, talk to Roberta and talk to Ken for a bit as well. As I said at the beginning of the interview, if you want to watch that before the interview officially began, you can check it out on patreon.com forward slash adventure games podcast. Uh, And as uh, they both said, uh, they're still working on Colossal Cave, making updates taking feedback on board so keep an eye out on them as well they are um yeah still working on it and uh, i would certainly hope to see them back again making another game uh we shall see and also love i also recommend you check out their books um not all fair tales have a happy ending and uh farewell to tara a book by roberta williams as well um so yeah so thank you for watching or listening uh, you can also uh, subscribe to the Everything podcast either on uh, YouTube or wherever you listen to podcasts and you get reviews and interviews and special content as well. There might be some interviews with, uh, you know, best of videos and the like uh, during the year as well. So thank you everyone for your support and uh, hope you enjoyed the interview and uh, I will see you and talk to you all again soon. So take care, everyone. Goodbye. <laughs>